Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, I'm going to help you identify tiny little creatures that will kill your trees and shrubs and also some diseases that I had battled with in my own garden. This morning, me and my husband were walking Sasha, our German Shepherd dog, and we came across this tree that's in my neighbor's yard and we're like, what is going on with this tree? So anyways, after a closer look, we were looking at these limbs and you can tell that they had been eaten by something and they just look very unhealthy. I actually know what this looks like because we battled this last year in our own tree. I feel like that is probably some fungal area right there. We have a bird nest. Looking at these leaves a little closer here, we found these caterpillars and this morning they were all over the limb. So they're not out as much right now as they were this morning. These caterpillars are just completely eating all these leaves and they've been very destructive to this tree. Here's a little caterpillar that is being so destructive right here. But as I said this morning, they were completely covered. And I came back this afternoon and I so wish that I could show you what I saw this morning. Here's another limb where they just completely have ate away. this tree. So we're going to treat this tree with some caterpillar treatment to kill these worms to help stop this destruction of the tree and hopefully get these limbs looking back like that. But if we don't treat now, then they're just going to continue to eat the tree. Oh, I found a patch. Here you go. This is what I saw this morning. You can just see it is infested with these little caterpillars right there. These nasty little boogers right here have almost destroyed this tree. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna treat this with for my neighbors. And then we're gonna get to spring. So this is what I'm gonna use today there's several different products out for this variety, but you can see that it controls worms and caterpillars. So what we're looking for is the BT label. And this is what I'm gonna use because this is what I have on hand. So you might see these little caterpillars fall off as I'm spraying. Here's the caterpillars right here that we're going to spray, but I am going to treat the whole tree. You can tell they don't like it already. They may just even fall off right in front of your eyes. They don't like it. Of course, I don't guess I'd like anything poison right at me either. That same tree was battling some fungus that I showed you on those leaves. So I'm gonna treat the tree with this li liquid copper fungicide. And then I think it also needed some iron and some fertilizer. So I'm gonna find something for that as well. 
Okay, so that same tree is needing some iron, so I'm going to give it this product here. I'm going to treat my own trees with it as well. Melargonite? Mel Melargonite. Anyways, it's a slow release and it has a lot of nitrogen in it and it's rich in iron. So it's right there. Iron rich. I'm just going to put about two cups around the base. you a difference between our trees and these trees that need a little help there. Wished I had some organic plant tone, tree tone, something like that to put on it, but I'm going to suggest that they give some sort of organic treatment to these trees as well. It's hard to see webbing on a camera. I don't know if you guys can see that kind of close up here. You can see that it's caught some kind of old worms there. A little bit of webbing. We're gonna treat that before it gets bad. So let's go look for something to treat that for. You can see the webbing here. Let's see if I can get up a little bit better. I believe that's some kind of tent worm. And let's try to find some kind of insecticide to treat that before it gets bad. do this Captain Jack's dead bug or maybe even better this thuricide is actually great this is what we're going to use so I'm going to try to find a little spray bottle and mix some of this up I got a little spray bottle here this will work and we'll be back all right, so we have some water here. I filled it up to about that there because we don't need that much. This is our thuricide. This treats leaf eating worms and gypsy moss controls moth larvae caterpillar. This is also good if something's eating your petunias as well. We're going to pour a little bit of this in there. I'm not very good at measuring. I'll just use a little bit of that and a little bit of this. My fat log. Top back on that. We're looking at an Oakland Holly, and as you can see, this tree is a lot lighter green than its neighboring tree right there. So when you look at this tree close up, as I've shown before, you can see right here, you see these leaves with these discolored spots on them. 
I believe that is black spot. I have I just sprayed some copper fungus on it, but let me show you close up. So that is black spot on this tree. So I just treated that for copper with copper fungus, and I'll show the video, the little. I just treated this with copper fungus, and I'll show the picture. I just treated this with copper fungus and I'll throw the picture up of that product. I also feel like that this tree may need some iron so I'm going to give it some additional iron supplement compared to how dark this one is and how dark green that one is. So I may overdo I'd rather overdo and treat the issue and get this plant looking good. This has been in the ground for three years and I would hate to lose this tree. All right, we also have some liquid iron. This just corrects and prevents plant yellowing. You can use on trees and shrubs. We're going to mix some of this iron into this two gallon container here. water. Okay, so I have my iron diluted with this water here. I do admit I am very bad about measuring things out. But as long as it's diluted, I've done this before and it's not hurt my plants before. So we're just gonna pour this iron water mixture around the base of the tree here. So this tree will absorb this iron and hopefully green this tree up. I'm trying to get it in there as well. Let's see if I can get it in the middle here. show you guys this is the same tree that I treated a couple weeks ago and I'm going to include that in the video prior to this but I wanted to show you the results I put some iron liquid iron at the bottom of the base of this tree and I hope you can see in this video here the base it's starting to green up really green versus to what it was before and then as we move up the tree here, dark green, medium green, so you can see where it's working from the ground up. And then up at the top of the tree, this is where we have that real lime green where you can see that it's blacking iron. And this tree also was battling black spot. So I treat it for that as well. So. Let me back up here and you can see the difference there between the bottom base of the tree versus the top of the tree there. So hopefully that'll continue to absorb that iron and work its way up and we'll see good results of this tree soon. But just to show comparison, 
This is not what it's supposed to look like. This is what it's supposed to look like. Dark green, healthy. I'm pan back over here versus here. So I hope you can see the difference. But I feel like we're on the right track at this base down here. Pretty green there, especially compared to the boxwoods. And all those leaves that we did treat with black spot, which is that right there, some of it's where I sprayed because the spray is kind of a uh, purplish color as well. That's where I'd sprayed. But all these leaves will most likely fall off. And I put my arm in there before to uh, remove those leaves. And I'm going to tell you, don't do that because it tore my arm up and I got a rash. So for now on, before I stick my hand in any tree like this, I will get some long gloves or wear a long sleeve. Lesson learned. this product on all my roses as a preventative but you can see it also treats black spot powdery mildew rust southern blight it actually fertilizes it and treats some insects so we're going to take this top off here and pour some of this and I'm going to give this about two of these cap capsules Put around the perimeter of the tree here. Just kind of mix it in with the mulch. So this is actually another example of tent worm. It's not actually a worm, it's a caterpillar. Tent worm doesn't really do any kind of damage to the tree or foliage, but removing it will eliminate the unsightliness of the tent itself. So this is a second area that I found that contains tent worm. I really can't find any caterpillars in there right now but you can still see the webbing. I spray and then remove the tent a day or two later. In this area I found in my roses and that little speckly stuff is just some fertilizer that the webbing is actually has caught in that nesting right there. It's really more of an eyesore than it is a threat to the plant, but personally, I don't like it, so I treat it with BT, and then a day or two, I remove the webbing. So this is another little creature that I have to deal with, and it creates havoc into my gardens. This is a fire ant. Fire ants are aggressive, venomous insects. I treat it with this fire ant killer when I see a mound and it usually takes about two days to kill all these little ants and then every spring and fall I use this duicide in the grass and it lasts this product lasts me about two to three months before I start seeing any kind of fire ants reappear but this also kills lots of different bugs and worms in our yard and right now it's great to kill the army worms here in August in Charlotte, North Carolina. 
So as you can see, my husband is spreading this out for me. It's a granular, so you can put it and out with the spread. That's why I was battling that tent worm area. I believe that's what you call it, where it had like webbing with the caterpillars and have you not. But after I treated that, I was able to remove it. And it looks a lot better in this area versus prior. I'll show you before and after. I showed you this Miss Molly that's been struggling here. Part of it had died that I had to trim away. But I was looking a little bit closer and I could see like some kind of hole right there that's pretty deep. You guys can see that right there at the base of the plant. So I don't know if something went underneath there and ate possibly some of those roots or disturbed the roots and that's why this plant is struggling. I mean it almost looks like to me when I look at it that it's been overwatered. But as hot as it's been here, I don't believe that that's the case. So I don't know. If you know what that hole is, give me a comment below if you experienced anything like this that had been trying to kill your shrub. Again, this is Miss Molly. And she has some beautiful blooms on her. There's a few little caterpillars moss on there right now.